In the mid-1990s, professional wrestling witnessed the rise of Sid UD. Here was a monster of a man. His towering height, a menacing look and immense strength made him an unforgettable superstar, no matter where he appeared. He was forged in WCW as Sid Vicious, but Sid found his greatest success in the WWF, where he won the WWF Championship twice. But what made Sid's run so special, and why didn't it last longer than a couple of years? In this video, we're going to take a look at how Psycho Sid became the master and the ruler of the World Wrestling Federation, if only for a year or two. Before we get into today's video, let me know if you enjoy this kind of content by giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. During the 90s, everyone wanted a piece of Sid. The skyscrapers were supposed to be a dominant force, an intimidating monster tag team, and they certainly looked the part. Sid looked like a superstar. He was legitimately huge at nearly six foot nine and freakishly strong. But even more importantly, he had the overflowing charisma that just cannot be taught. Unfortunately, it didn't take long for things to fall apart when the bell rang. There was, admittedly, a glaring lack of in-ring ability. He could also be quite sloppy when it came to the safety of his opponents. At War Games in 1991, Sid dropped Brian Pillman on his head during a powerbomb. The two men weren't getting along with each other at the time, and there was some speculation as to whether Sid did this on purpose. But despite the obvious issue surrounding him, Sid would get some major chances in WCW. He was even included in the early 90s version of The Four Horsemen. Sid proved that while you can teach wrestling moves at school, charisma is a quality that you've either got or you don't. Vince McMahon had been interested in signing Sid for some time during the late 80s and early 90s, WCW caught wind of this and offered to double his downside guarantee if he stayed with them. McMahon came back and sweetened the deal with the promise of a WrestleMania main event against Hulk Hogan. Sid was a sucker for the spotlight and eventually chose to take the lower offer and join the WWF. His 1991 debut saw him pin Ted DiBiase. He was absolutely awe-inspiring from day one of his Federation career. The original WrestleMania 8 main event was supposed to see the dream match of Hulk Hogan versus Ric Flair for the title, but Hogan had other plans, and so Sid became the backup plan for that year's main event. Around this time, Sid ran into his old enemy, Brian Pillman, at an airport and ended up threatening him with a squeegee mop of all things. Word did get back to the WWF management and Vince McMahon was not happy. At the 1992 Royal Rumble, Sid entered at number 29. He eliminated most of the top stars including Roddy Piper, Randy Savage, Rick Martel and even Hogan. The match came down to the final two which was Sid and Ric Flair when a vengeful Hogan yanked Sid over the top ropes leading Flair to win the match and the championship. After this performance, it was clear that Vince McMahon was going all in with the big man. What he didn't anticipate, however, was Sid failing a drugs test right before the biggest show of the year. McMahon decided to ignore the positive test and carry on with his plans. But unfortunately, despite all of the hype, the WrestleMania main event was pretty damn poor. One thing became immediately clear. Sid was not good in matches against other big men. After a match with the Ultimate Warrior, Sid went AWOL. He was really unhappy at having the Warrior kick out of his powerbomb and decided to stop showing up for work. Strangely enough, Sid had a known obsession with softball and his walkout coincided with softball season. And this wasn't the first time Back in WCW, he'd earned the nickname of Softball Sid for no-showing events that clashed with local softball matches. Naturally, Vince McMahon was pissed 
It was one thing, him threatening WCW wrestlers in airports, but it was quite another for him to be literally walking off the job. Between this incident and the failed drugs test, McMahon had seemingly lost all confidence in Big Sid. They replaced him with Papa Shango in the feud with the Ultimate Warrior, and Sid just disappeared from the WWF completely. It wasn't until May 1993 when Sid re-emerged in WCW. His time back in Ted Turner's company would be really bloody, but for all the wrong reasons. Once again, he was mostly treated like an absolute superstar in WCW. Later in 1993, he was main eventing house shows against Ric Flair and wrestling Sting on pay-per-view. But all of that would come to a violent halt during a UK tour in October. It was an incident that gave Sid a nasty reputation. After a house show, an argument broke out in the hotel bar between Sid and Arn Anderson and things escalated when Sid threatened Anderson with a bar stool. Things seemed to cool down when both men went off to their hotel rooms. That was until Sid had a change of heart. Leaving his hotel room, he stalked his way down the corridor to Anderson's room. What ensued was a brutal attack in which Sid stabbed Anderson multiple times with a pair of scissors. Luckily, despite massive blood loss, Anderson managed to survive the attack but the same couldn't be said for Sid's career in WCW. In 1995, the WWF had a spot to fill. Bruce Pritchard was the one who suggested to McMahon that Sid could make a comeback. McMahon decided to give him another shot in February 1995. In the aftermath of the stabbing, this was not a popular decision. Many in the locker room were against his return and they sided with Arn Anderson. But as always, it was McMahon's way or the highway. The idea was to test the waters by initially positioning Sid as Shawn Michaels' new bodyguard before eventually giving him a singles push of his own. Sid seemed more motivated than ever. McMahon noticed how Sid would work out before and after every flight as he travelled from town to town. Nobody else on the roster was making that kind of commitment and it was time for his big push to begin. The night after WrestleMania 11, Sid attacked Shawn Michaels with three power bombs, only for Diesel to make the save, setting the stage for a Diesel vs Psycho Sid feud. This was Sid's big chance in the main event, but unfortunately, it was a disaster. Their match was the absolute pit. The WWF attempted to mask their limitations by putting them in gimmick matches, but it just didn't work. Later, they tried to mask Sid's limitations in the ring by teaming him up with the 1-2-3 kid. In the end, he even jobbed out to Bob Holly on a house show before taking an extended leave of absence due to a neck injury. In fact, he was told by specialists that he would never wrestle again. The WWF had invested a lot in him, but he never quite lived up to the hype, and that was mostly their problem. They booked him really badly. He should have been booked to win squash matches on TV and have longer bouts against smaller opponents on pay-per-view. Either way, Sid ended up retiring. He literally left the business and took a job as a salesman. Sid wasn't interested in talking to Vince, as far as he was concerned, he was done with the business. However, by some twist of fate, he ended up answering a call from McMahon himself. McMahon said he was in a pinch and he needed Sid to fill in for a few dates urgently. Sid reluctantly agreed and got on a flight, where he would end up wrestling Owen Hart on a bunch of house shows in June 1996. While he was there... McMahon made it clear that he wanted him back full-time as a replacement for the Ultimate Warrior, who was on the way out. And so, Sid stepped in for the Warrior at In Your House 9 in a tag team bout, but it was really apparent that he was nervous to wrestle due to lingering neck issues. But McMahon seemingly had learned from past mistakes and he now understood that fans weren't interested in seeing Sid slog through 20-minute matches against other big men. What they wanted to see was this big bastard demolishing his opponents. 
Come SummerSlam in 1996, Sid faced off against the British Bulldog and pulled off a six-minute win. The real surprise came from the crowd reaction. They were red hot for Sid and Vince sat up and took notice. The main event of SummerSlam saw Shawn Michaels wrestle Vader, with the initial plan being for their feud to extend until the Royal Rumble in 1997, but Michaels hated Vader and he didn't want to work with him. Sid, meanwhile, was getting huge pops from the audience, and more importantly, Michaels actually really liked him. It was a real statement when Sid pinned Vader at the Buried Alive pay-per-view. Vader was out, and Sid was in. In an incredible moment, Sid even managed to beat an elephant in a tug-of-war contest. Shawn Michaels had no complaints about working with Sid. He felt the matches would be more exciting, the promos would be more engaging, and Sid would present a more credible threat than Vader ever did. Their feud reached its peak at the Survivor Series in November 96 in Madison Square Garden. This would be one of Sid's finest ever performances, a 20-minute match against Michaels. Interestingly, the New York crowd even started to boo Sean. That's how incredibly over the big man was. But not for long. The match ended in dramatic fashion with Sid using a TV camera to knock out Jose Lothario. This distracted Michaels for long enough for Sid to capitalise before pinning him to win the championship. Michaels did an incredible job of making Sid look like a monster and he was reportedly happy enough to drop the title. But that's not really a surprise considering the storyline was already mapped out all the way to the Royal Rumble, where he'd get his revenge. At In Your House 12 in December, Sid defended his title against Bret Hart in a really good 17-minute match, and it was just further proof that Sid could put on a great show with smaller, more technically gifted wrestlers. Later, Sid powerbombed Jose Lothario's son onto a table backstage, which gave him quite a bit of heat going into the Royal Rumble. However, his downfall would begin far sooner than his rematch with Shawn Michaels. The Royal Rumble was a really important show for the WWF in 1997. They were still badly losing to WCW in the ratings war, but this show was going to be their biggest show for years. They'd booked the massive San Antonio Alamo Dome, and this was the Federation's chance to show they were still in the fight in front of a monster crowd. They set up a press conference in downtown San Antonio, a genuine press conference, and invited hundreds of people to come and witness it. Shawn Michaels managed to roll up to the press conference half asleep after being out partying all night, but at least he turned up. Sid, on the other hand, overslept and no-showed the event. This lapse in responsibility shook McMahon's faith in him, as WWF champion. From then on, his days as a main eventer in the company were numbered. At the Royal Rumble, Shawn Michaels defeated Sid in front of 60,000 hometown fans, and he walked out as champion, but it wasn't long after that that he famously lost his smile. That led to Bret Hart and then Sid becoming champions in quick succession. Yes, it was a surprise to see Sid win the belt back so quickly, but McMahon only wanted to use him as a transitional champion. He was frustrated with both Sean and Sid by this point, and he wanted to put the title on somebody that he could rely on, and so he decided to go with a WrestleMania 13 match between Sid and The Undertaker. As Sid lost the title to The Undertaker, this would be the end of his main event career in the WWF. Sid claimed that he had a herniated disc in his back and he failed to show up for multiple advertised matches, which further eroded the company's trust in him. By the time Sid was squashed by The Undertaker in a brief five-minute match, his credibility had reached an all-time low. He almost refused to lose that match and he had to be taken aside by Bruce Pritchard, who warned him about his future in the company if he didn't start doing what he was told. The tipping point came after a doctor revealed that a pinched vertebrae was causing numbness in his limbs. 
Despite this diagnosis, Sid was still expected to wrestle. The relationship between himself and Vince had broken down completely. Sid claimed to Vince that he'd informed various officials, including Bruce Pritchard and Jim Cornette, that he was not fit to compete, but apparently the message never reached Vince. For his part, Vince was baffled as to why Sid hadn't come directly to him and communicated his health concerns. This was a crucial breakdown in communication and trust, leaving both men at odds with each other. And it wasn't long before the WWF decided to fire him. After leaving the Federation, Sid briefly went to ECW and then he had another run in WCW Looking back, it wasn't his wrestling skills or promo ability that held him back. Even his hot temper was something that people were willing to ignore. Sid had all the looks and the charisma of a megastar, but his lack of reliability kept him from reaching the greatness that many thought that he could achieve. <laughs> 